African American skin care has to be looked at very specifically. Our skin is different, you know, our skin is different from other races. Unfortunately, of the half a dozen dermatologists that I saw, I really felt like they didn't care. I felt like it was a money-making machine for them. And there's no way I'm going anywhere else so that they can tell me how to take care of my skin when they aren't black women. There's so many different realms when it comes to black people that we should have more doctors specialized in African American skin care. There are certain skin conditions that disproportionately affect the black community. For example, uneven skin tone. A lot of us are darker around here, we're darker here. Hyperpigmentation. There are diseases such as too much pigment from eczema, inflammatory diseases, from psoriasis, and there are diseases where there's pigment loss, like vitiligo. I have a skin condition called vitiligo. Um, I think it first appeared when I was about 14, I would say a freshman in high school. There's absolutely no cure for vitiligo. I mean, I've been to probably like 10 different dermatologists, I've been holistic doctors, and there's no cure at all. Part of the reason why African Americans in particular weren't finding products that were created specifically to cater to their unique skincare needs because we were being overlooked. I don't think that you know many brands considered what the opportunity was among African American consumers. And I think the, the thinking was more so, you know, they can use what everyone else uses. I never had acne as a teenager, but in my like early 20s, like 21, I started to have breakouts and I didn't know what to do, so I went to the dermatologist and I just felt like they were just throwing random things at me. I saw at least half a dozen dermatologists and no one was able to help with my problem. I first tried to treat it, I would say my mom took me to the dermatologist. They gave me rash cream and it did absolutely nothing. So I'm thinking the dermatologist just didn't know, you know, what I had or, you know, how to treat it. I am searching high and low with trying to find a black dermatologist, or a black woman dermatologist. And the only way I will listen is if she's a black woman because she can speak for black skin and how to take care of black skin. There's no way I'm going anywhere else so that they can tell me how to take care of my skin when they aren't black women. There's a relatability and a comfortability because there is uh, a shared cultural experience and pain point of things that we've experienced that we don't have to explain to each other. We are all taught the same in medical school and during dermatology residency. And the residency programs are trying to diversify now, but the day-to-day -day practices and issues that black skin must deal with is very hard to understand if you're not actually going through it. What's really funny is that the last dermatologist that I went to was a black woman, a Jamaican woman, Rosemary Ingleton. She recommended similar products as another dermatologist, but the difference was that she took the time to explain how the products work, how to use them, how to not use them. And unfortunately, of the half a dozen dermatologists that I saw prior to Dr. Ingleton, I really felt like they didn't care. I felt like it was a money-making machine for them. I think because vitiligo is native to black people, that's why doctors don't have as much knowledge and there isn't much research um, done. I believe if it was a skin condition more prominent in white communities, then they would probably do a, a lot more research and they would have more knowledge of it. African American skin care has to be looked at very specifically. We have special needs in terms of our skin and how we, how we moisturize, how we engage with the sun, all of those things are really important. Black skin care needs to be specialized because black skin is much more reactive than white skin and it's much more sensitive, it can be, than white skin and many harsh chemicals that are sometimes used in skincare systems, even though they can give effective results, are not well tolerated by black skin. And then you end up with something else you have to treat. Our skin is different. You know, our skin is different from other races. Like we have oily skin, dry skin, eczema, vitiligo. There's so many different realms, you know, when it comes to like black people that 
we should have more doctors specialized in African American or black folks there in skincare. So what's happened now in dermatology, even for medical conditions, the insurance companies are constantly looking at the different types of medical conditions and weeding out things that they're going to cover. So in the past, where discoloration may have been covered before, mole removals, even though they weren't dangerous, may have been covered before, now they consider these treatments not medically necessary. It becomes an out-of-pocket expense and you need multiple treatments, so it can be quite expensive. I've spent between eight and 10K on doctors alone. I feel like medicine hasn't helped me over the years, and that could be because doctors just may not be uh, that knowledgeable of, of my condition. Over the years, going to so many different dermatologists and no one has actually told me, like, there's no cure for this. Like, we cannot help you. Like, for me to have to kind of search that and find that out myself, it's kind of disheartening. Like, it would have saved me a lot of time if one doctor would have told me, hey, I'm sorry, but there's really nothing we can do. It doesn't make sense because African Americans attribute uh, $1.3 trillion in spending to the uh, national economy. If we were an actual country, we would be the 15th largest economy in the world, right between Spain and Mexico. And if you think about that, the United States has an actual trade agreement with Mexico, right? So that to guarantee reciprocity. Imagine if everyone thought about African Americans with that same thought around reciprocity, right? In terms of us getting something back for what we give to the economy. I think that we have shown that we have the buying power and that we speak volumes with where we spend our money. So when we continue to support the brands and the categories that make, you know, that are important to us, it will continue to validate the need to go deeper and farther when it comes to the research and investment in this particular consumer. I think that what we're seeing now is um, an overall industry uh, interest growing in more evolved skincare routines and we're seeing black people venture into products that weren't traditionally considered for us. And what we're actually seeing is a little bit of a boom in uh, black owned skincare products um, and industries uh, creating products specifically for African American skin. I like that we're seeing more skincare lines that are either created for women of color or created specifically with women of color in mind. We have a long way to go, but there definitely is more of an openness to creating products for darker skin tones. When we talk back to brands, brands listen, they take notice. What we as a community have to th start thinking about is how do we use that voice to do things other than share memes, right? One of the things I think is, is missing is we're not demanding more. We should demand better products. We should demand products in our neighborhoods. We should demand that the companies that make the products that we're buying actually hire people who look like us. Our voice is incredibly influential and incredibly important in social spaces. We just have to use it the right way.